All right, welcome back to the big board, etc. cetera. Uh, Pans in North Africa, wrapping up this scenario, we're done here. I've uh, already posted a video in regards to gameplay and all that sort of fun stuff for this particular scenario. I enjoyed it very much. I thought it'd be interesting to revisit my impressions and review slash comments. Uh, can't really use initial impressions anymore since Everybody else is now saying that. So we're just going to talk about the structure of the game, I think, and a little bit about what I like and what I don't like and what I think could be better in the system. But uh, some things are um, uh, not changeable, and that's okay. Uh, net, net, if you don't want to listen, don't want to watch, <clears throat> I believe the Panzer system, both it and MBT, provide a lot of value for money are entertaining, uh, thematically on point, and provide a good narrative and give you a flavor for the tank-on-tank -tank squad level combat that you might be looking for. I think it's kind of the poor cousin of any of the infantry-oriented or infantry-focused uh, games that are out there. And by that, of course, I mean ASL as the, I won't call it the gold standard, but the most complex standard, the... Uh, you know, the guru level of intricate detail uh, that is uh, very popular or the more accessible games such as uh, Last 100 Yards, Lock and Low Tactical, Old School Tactical, uh, those types of games. I mean, I guess you can include uh, Band of Brothers in there as well or whatever it's called. I, I forget. I think I sold those, those guys off. Not a bad system at all. But uh, nevertheless, this is kind of the poor cousin because uh, people... Uh, a lot of people play the basic game and just play with the tanks and then go, eh, this is kind of okay. And they don't dig in and play a little bit more of the advanced stuff, which really is the tank combat is no more complex or involved than, uh, than playing ASLs, AFVs. Uh, it's literally a couple of die, extra die rolls. The neat thing about this system, however, is regardless whether you're using infantry or air or artillery or just tanks, there are there is a fantastically modular set of rules for advanced and optional rules that allow you to really make it as involved and detailed as you want it to be. And let, I kind of want to talk about that uh, again in a second. And hopefully, I won't forget to come back to it. But my AAR, my AAR format or my uh, my review format really talks about uh, role, decision space, intelligence, player objectives, order of battle, conflict resolution, logistics, and historical narrative and playtime and repay value and components. So we'll go over that in general. Uh, clearly, the role here is at the company or battalion level, depending on how big the scenario is. What we're looking at here on the map uh, is uh, a company of infantry for both sides. Well, uh, one's a mechanized company, one is uh, basically foot. And then we've got some uh, attached elements. I would call it uh, basically two companies for each each side of tanks. Uh, so we're at that company uh, battalion scale of decision making. And you're you're directing the activities of every single unit on the board via a set of command chits, which, you know, if you haven't followed at all or, or followed, seen any of the third, I've got something like 30 videos on this game on, on online. Uh, command chits are used to decide what activities you're going to do. You're either going to move or fire, and you may be in Overwatch. You may have no command. You may uh, do some short halt, and there's some other, other bits and pieces. But basically... Uh, the system breaks down into you will either move first or fire first, and you'll get to choose that, number one. And then the other, or the alternating player, the enemy player, will will take first action uh, in the one that you didn't. Uh, so you'll get to conduct all your fires, and then they'll conduct all their fires. And given that we're dealing with a very limited amount of time for a game turn, you know, it can be a few minutes... Uh, that makes reasonable sense to me. Uh, there are modified rules that you can use. I have gone as far as taking each individual company and rolling for initiative to see who was going to go first for each company. Just adds a lot of die rolls. 
adds a, a fair bit more complexity and a lot of time. And uh, once you start shuffling stuff around, it all gets a little hard to keep track of in any case. So that's the role side of things. I think that's what would, would summarize things out there for us pretty nicely. And then there's decision spaces. Clearly, it's extremely tactical, right? It's a uh, tank on tank, squad on squad level. So I don't think uh, everything you're doing here is in that uh, find them, fix them, finish them motif. Uh, very, uh, very squad level orientated. You're you're looking for flanking positions. You're looking for opportunities to create uh, difficult decisions for the enemy. Should they fire? Should they move? Should they stay in cover? Should they race to cover? Most of the scenarios, and I'm going to say this, I shouldn't say this, I shouldn't say most. Many of the scenarios feel to me like they're meeting engagements. So this, for instance, is a, is a uh, defensive scenario where we've got an established defense for the British. Germans are coming uh, through its 21st Panzer, racing through, uh, looking to beat up on 1st Armoured and penetrate and head on to their next objective. However, we also have had uh, two companies, (laughs) they've been pretty much demolished, uh, two companies uh, enter the map during Sandstorm and it became a meeting engagement. So given lack of visibility and everything everything else, where were, where were the two forces going to clash? Uh, there are a couple of objectives here that had to be uh, captured, potentially uh, little hilltops <coughs> or rises in the terrain. Now, given this is set in North Africa, all the maps are much more open. There's a lot more rough terrain on them. Uh, there are some new things in this module that are... are, are um, terrain add-ons, I guess. You know, there are villages and different uh, trees and orchards and bits and pieces, which adds a lot of variability to all the maps. There's a whole bunch of maps in the game. I'm not going to... It's all on the back of the box. You can look at that online. Uh, no need for me to go into that sort of detail. So uh, so in any case, so many of the scenarios feel like they're in meeting engagement. And you are typically going to win basically by either A, killing more than the other guy, Every unit on the map has a point value, and that's all uh, line itemed out in very comprehensive scenario instructions. <clears throat> and then, and then, and or you are going to seize uh, physical objectives, geographical objecti- blah, 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 objectives on the map, or exit units off the map. So in this p- particular case, we have Germans need to get their infantry company, mechanized infantry company, off the map get nine out of X number of units off the map and a bunch of VPs, which would basically seal the deal for you to win. Uh, incrementally, if you also capture these two little hilltops, then you get some more bonus points and then it was uh, not going a whole bunch of stuff out. And if we look at over here, the losses, see the green stuff, that's the Commonwealth stack and the gray stuff and blue stuff, that's the, uh, that's the German losses. Now, the Germans do have a number of units with track and uh, mobility kills here as well, but they don't count for VP losses just yet. Uh, so uh, anyway, it is what it is. So Germans won this, this one, uh, won this particular battle um, for a wide variety of reasons, but we'll, we'll get into that later. All right, uh, conflict resolution. Go watch a video. I've done a number of these videos uh, about how uh, uh, AFV fire is resolved. And GP fire, general purpose fire, so infantry shooting at infantry or uh, uh, artillery or mortars or machine guns or tanks firing the machine guns at infantry is a very simple uh, system where you look at your fire capability. Let's call it a three. In fact, fact, let me just do do this right now. I'll show you real quick because this is how easy it is. Uh, Even though I... Probably shouldn't do this in the middle of a, of a, of a, of a, a review. So if I had a fire strength of three and uh, I had a defensive uh, value of four, see this GP defensive factor here, so four or five, I would need, if I roll less than 56, I am not going to uh, have any effect. If I roll between 56 and 83, I am going to suppress the unit. If I roll over 83, I'm going to inflict a loss. And if that's an infantry unit, it'll flip and take a step loss. There's a a swag of uh, modifiers here. Uh, There's a close assault concept, which is really, really cool. Very straightforward. 
do the rolls uh, rolls percentile dies highest wins. Other guy has to leave or no, the, has to the other guy takes a loss, and you you'll uh, keep resolving until uh, until things uh, the hex is empty basically. So it's all pretty straightforward. It looks complex because of the thickness of the rule book. This rule book is uh, is a bit of a beast. Like the basic and advanced rules are uh, clocking in at 68 pages, including the terrain thing on the back. But I'm telling you, once you get into this, look at this big examples in here and all this sort of stuff, full color, uh, nice big index, uh, content uh, index at the front and then indexed uh, stuff in the back that you can look up everything. All of this is mostly straightforward. There is some wording in here that just beggars belief when I when I try to understand it. It happened to me last night. I was trying to clarify in my mind how to work out whether with a quick firing unit I got two hits or one hit, <laughs> right? Uh, because what, did two shells make the penetration or did one? And uh, it wasn't until I actually wrote the question down and then posted it on, on Facebook that it struck me that this is what the rule actually meant. And then I just asked the clarifying question versus versus me asking the dumb question. Uh, <clears throat> although I did say explain like I'm five. Uh, but anyway, so there are little bits like that that get a little frustrating sometimes to, to me anyway. And that may be just the way I read rules. I, I'm a bit of a dog's breakfast when it comes to that. So that's that conflict. There's no logistics in this game except that when you have multiple types of uh, uh, multiple types of uh, ammunition, you will need to roll. Uh, so uh, here, for instance, uh, this HG. Uh, I, if I roll a seven or less, I can use that uh, ammo. Uh, smoke six or less. Now, so it's very easy on a D10 to do that. Uh, there are some other types of ammunition in here that you will have a much lower rolls, and they'll be a, a lot more difficult to actually achieve using a very, uh, uh, a, well, let's call it a selective or specialized uh, round. So here are the Marta 2s, uh, they're APCR rounds. Well, you get them all the time. Sorry, I uh, picked the wrong one. Uh, you, you get a, you have a nine for that one, that guy. But anyway, there you go. So uh, now let's talk about these data cards. So these can be very confusing, particularly when I start marrying them up against uh, spotting definitions and things like that. So here I've got V, L, and S sized units. And then uh, I've got all the details on my data card for all the different things, all these different... Uh, little items here. There are cards that explain, there are PDFs or, or charts that explain what these things are, but not in absolute finite granular detail. It not, it's not line itemed out. And it, it's a missed opportunity here, I think, to have, have, to have some form of color coding on here, particularly across here with all these acronyms, to just let us know, right? Uh, help me understand. Uh, it becomes second nature after a while. You know, I've played this game a lot. And when I come back to it and revisit it, you know, you've probably saw one of the first videos I, I did on this. I I misstated uh, how ranges work. I just hadn't touched it for a year and a half or so. And so uh, it, uh, and I didn't do rules review before I jump back in, which I usually do. Right, so the I think these are a missed opportunity. Uh, I certainly love them, though. I, I literally love them. I think they're fun because I get such granular information at different ranges and different penetration capabilities at different ranges and then all the different armor functions based on where you get hit. So you're getting real, you're getting right into it, right? Uh, and these cards are dual-sided. You've got different versions of, of vehicles on both sides and there's lots and lots and lots of those. You kind of have a little swag bag of them uh, in the in the scenario. So in this case, we've got two Fs. I think are they twos or threes? The Marta twos, I think, is what we're using here. Where did they go? They're back here somewhere. Yeah, Marta twos uh, and three Js, and then the three J Langs are on the back of this, and then we had four F ones and. We had 88 millimeters, and so you got all these cards, and it's all good. It all works nicely. Uh, same for the for the allies. 
The charts are fantastic. I, everything on here is great. Once again, you know, definitions somewhere would be cool. Uh, like it, and the rule doesn't say what V is. Now, V stands for vehicle, <laughs> right? But, uh, and then S is uh, foot. And then this is this can be towed or or uh, uh, open vehicles or whatever the case may be. Uh, sequence of players on here. Now, the thing that I love about this game, as I mentioned earlier, that I wanted to come back to, was this modular nature. And I, I noticed I've made a change here with the rule books where they now have, uh, where is it? <clears throat> so basically rules one through, I think it's six, to the six or seven, let's see. And that glossary does not include everything that I would have thought it was, that would, would have, okay, yeah, six. So rule one through six is this, uh, 60 some pages very specific and very detailed and very well organized and very easy to find and there's nice the cool thing about these charts is that there are rules references on the chart so you can go find things very very easily but then they decided for some reason with optional rules you know another 24 pages of optional rules to just bust these things out to one side now these optional rules well, hidden units, you know, I don't use that. I, I think that's just kind of goofy. I don't like the way that works. But uh, morale, which involves uh, cohesion points and uh, morale checks and breaking and hesitating forces and the ability to recover, uh, those, I love those rules. And they're all in the scenarios. So I can open up a scenario here and I can just look at it or I can roll it all up you know, independently and take leave chance to it. Let's see. See, here we go. Cohesion point here is 10. Uh, it means if I, uh, so once I lose 10 units of this, they're going to reach their cohesion point, 10 or more. Uh, we're going to have issues and uh, there are going to be restrictions and we're going to have to start rolling, making morale rolls, which will then force me either to be hesitating or breaking or no effect. Uh, so love the morale roll, rules and you can just play you know, with some of the advanced rules and just add the morale rules. You don't have to add any of the other advanced rules if you don't really want to. I would always encourage you to use the advanced uh, firing rules though. Uh, let's skip, um, oh, there's some spotting limitations, uh, optional rules. Now I can probably see why they split this stuff out because some of it really is just like too much. Uh, Turrets, you know, you want to have rotation and all that sort of good stuff. You can have that. We we do that here when I play. Uh, different ammo types. We get into some detail there and brew up modifiers and variable penetration, which is fun. Uh, pinning fire. You can actually do pinning fire and all this sort of good stuff. So uh, I guess there's a lot. So there's some there's some just more specific details. Uh, but then you get into having leaders. And uh, alternate spotting conditions, uh, starting fires. I guess some vehicles have dual driving controls. Who knew? Uh, some of these, some of these uh, unique uh, special units for this particular module are in here. And then I think we got uh, all those forward observers and bits and pieces. But basically, and the leader, and I don't mind using the leaders because it adds a little flavor. Uh, to the to the game, but everything else is in here, right? So I, you know, I would have just put it all in the one book, really, just because you can do entrenchments, you can have aircraft, you can have artillery, you can have all quick marching, you can do uh, all sorts of bits and pieces here, uh, making your own uh, defensive terrain and stuff. Uh, so look. Command ranges obviously are important. That's another advanced rule I use all the time. So that's all the good stuff, right? The things that leave me cold with this game, as I said, is I think we could have done a better job on these data cards and on some definitions. It annoys the Dickens out of me that these counters don't fit in these hexes. And they're big counters, which is great. And they're big hexes, which is great. But they don't fit. <laughs> and it's just... Like, wow, really? Uh, how did that happen? And the other thing is, you know, and everyone's commented on this. Well, not everyone. The maps are functional at best. They are not pretty. 
Uh, remind, remind me, I used to play uh, Pens and Blades and Pens and way back in the day, and it reminds me of them. The, the, the maps were so droll and bland and tedious that uh, it was just, the color scheme was kind of eh. Now, here for Panza in North Africa, this has kind of got this, it's a similar uh, set of colors, so you can use these other um, other modules. You could probably bring their maps in, not that you're going to want to because there's lots of forests and stuff, but uh, you could. Uh, it's just got this generic palette that is um, very plain relative to the richer contrasting, richer detailed maps in other tactical games that we see from, you know, pick one, right, uh, from other vendors and other publishers. So that's my only beef really with that whole situation is that it could be could be a little more, uh, I guess, uh, artistically attractive, which is all subjective, right? Okay, so there's that. Uh, so rules are good, charts are good, units are fine. Uh, everything kind of works well together. You do end up with a lot of markers on the map. There can be a little bit of marker fatigue uh, and those stacks can get pretty high. So if I'm suppressed and broken and there was a brew up in this hex and I've got some infantry on a tank or on a truck and there's a, uh, I don't know, an entrenchment or dust off or dust on, all of a sudden I, you got these unwieldy stacks and I don't know how you fix that. I mean, that's just the system and it is what it is. It, uh, you've got your command chits as well. Of course, they come off as we play along. Uh, so not a problem, but if, you, if you're not a fan of clutter, you know, or you like it very tidy on your maps because you're an OCD war gamer with issues, <laughs> not that there's anything wrong with having issues, just that if you have them, this ain't for you. But anyway, look, I just wanted to chat about this because I don't think my views on this game have really changed at all. Uh, I've got all the modules. Uh, I have played, as I said, played quite a, quite a lot. Uh, played Opposed as well. Uh, I enjoy it immensely, and I, uh, I encourage you to you know, try it out. Uh, North Africa is a good one to get because it's a big, big module, and it's a full module. You don't need any other modules to go with it. It covers the full gamut of the war pretty much. And there's even some campaign stuff in here as well, where you can play from one scenario to another sort of mini campaigns that, you know, whether it's uh, operation battle axe or Gazala or whatever it is, uh, not Gazala, uh, the battle of Gazala, you know, you can run these multiple scenarios and then uh, just carry on with the forces that you have, which totally changes how you play. Right. Uh, which is pretty cool. Uh, so lots of good stuff encourage you to check it out if you like more modern stuff mbt's your huckleberry that's probably my sweet spot probably my favorite i'm a big fan of uh, the african theater so i had to get this one as well and we'll see what comes out next right and that was my dog looks like i need to go let him out all right i'm gonna let you guys go all the best roll some dice next up well we'll talk about that later but more coming soon ciao